Unit 7, we look at, at 7.4, nominal and effective interest rates. And I'm going to explain it like this. Imagine you put $100 in the bank and the bank offers you 12% per annum. Then after one year, you will have a hundred dollars plus the twelve percent of a hundred which is a hundred you will have a hundred and twelve dollars in the bank but if we said twelve percent per annum compounded monthly well first of all think about it Surely you're not going to get 12% every month, right? If it's 12% per annum and they compound it monthly, you're going to get 1% every month. So let's have a look for a few months. Month and the total you have in the bank. So month zero is when you just put it in. End of, mo end of month one, you're going to have a hundred rand, a hundred dollars plus one percent, which is one. So you'll have a hundred and one dollars. So remember the compound now is going to kick in in month two. Because in month two, it's your hundred and one plus. 1% of 101, not of 100. So by now you'll have 102.01 dollars. So end of month three, you have your 102.01 plus 1% 1 of that. So it's 103.03. .03. Now I'm going to skip ahead to end of month 12. It comes to a hundred and twelve dollars point six eight. So if you compare when it's compounded monthly, they still say it's let's just write this hundred and twelve point six eight. They still say. They quote 12% per annum, but they say compounded monthly. Then you get $112.68, whereas if it is a 12% per annum just compounded yearly, you would only have had $112. So if your compounding periods are more than one per year, you actually going to get a little bit more. So the nominal interest rate, remember the word rate because that tells us percentage, it is the quoted. So the bank will quote, I will give you 12% per year compounded monthly. The effective interest rate is what you really got which we've now seen if you compound more than once a year it's always a little bit more so here's your formula to get from the one to the other so if you want your IE means effective interest rate. You don't need to have the amount and you always just work it out over one year. 
that is 1 plus your nominal, the quoted, over m to the power of m with a separate minus 1, where m is number of interest periods per year. So if we calculated the effective interest rate on this one above, the M's would be 12 because it is monthly. Right, let's do two examples. I'm going to cut it down here. So I've got two examples here. 7.5%. It would say 7.5% per annum compounded monthly. So if you know it's monthly, you know your M is a 12. So this is your nominal effective rate. So this is your IN. So IE, your effective is 1 plus, you can write 7.5% or you can change it to a decimal over 12 to the power of 12 take away 1. And again, remember what happens. You will, and here, okay, I'm going to say something now. Let me first write. So here I'm going to say, Write this to four, always write it to four decimals. Because to get to percentage, we're going to times by a hundred. So now if I times by a hundred, I get 7.76%. So if you want to get a two percentage, then while it's still a decimal like this, Write it to four decimal places, then you know you're going to have a good rounding here. And here, here's the one case where I definitely say, give your final answer to two decimal places. Whereas often with percentage, we only do one, but because we're comparing the effective and the nominal. Sometimes the difference is very small and it's only in the second decimal place. So you have to do that to two. Now you can see the bank quoted you 7.5% per annum compounded monthly. Effectively, you got 7.76%. Let's do another one. You invest $250 and you investing it for five years and your interest rate is 9.5% per annum. compounded weekly and here the question is not what is the effective interest rate here the question is what will you have available at the end of your five years so we have to adapt our formula a bit where we had 1 plus i, now you have to say i over m to the n times m. Remember, n is the number of years. m is then, your weekly says, m is 52, 52 weeks in a year. So the minute it's not compounded yearly, your formula changes to this.
So it's 250, 1 plus, you can put 9.5% or you could put 0 0.095 over how many weeks in a year? To the power of number of years times the M. Right, let's look at our answer for some important things here. First thing, always round to two decimals and round. Don't just write the second decimal. Round correctly. And the other thing is always include your currency. We don't include currency or any units that we work with, meters, whatever. We don't include them in our calculations. But when you get to the answer, you have to show that you know it is dollars.